Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It's Thursday, April the 7th, and this is another edition of your Royal Updates and Other News. The disclaimer can be found in the description. Now, I'm going to go up, and I just want to show you a 1 minute 38 second clip of um, something that happened with our president today. Um, let me just stop it for one second. Uh, our former president, uh, Barack Obama, um, who served two terms in the White House, was there celebrating, I think, the 12-year anniversary of Obamacare. And he was in there, and when I watched this um, breaking live, our poor president, and you guys have to know, no matter where you are in the world, is just doesn't seem to be all there. And I think he even called himself the vice president today, and, and then... Um, Former President Obama even kind of made a joke about him. It was it was really sad. Now it's as though his party has completely just ignoring him. But let me show you this little clip. I'll stop talking. It's just a minute and thirty uh, four seconds. Thank you. Joe Biden is now the most unpopular person in virtually any room he enters. If you doubt it, watch this. This was the scene at the White House today. Take a careful look at this. You've never seen anything like it. Barack Obama. That's the President of the United States in his own house, shunned. Nobody would talk to him. So Biden wandered off looking vacant as a crowd formed around a former President Barack Obama, who was obviously deeply grateful for the attention. On, and then it Harris, got worse. Vice it got President. much more poignant than that. Watch Biden try to horn in on the conversation swirling around Obama. Everyone involved in that conversation, including Kamala Harris, who supposedly works for Biden, ignored Biden completely. Biden desperately tried to get Obama's attention. He puts his hand on Obama's shoulder. He even calls him Barack, like they're friends. But Obama blows him off. He acts like Biden's not even there. Ask yourself if you have ever in your life seen anything sadder than this. hands on his shoulder. Ah, make it stop. It's awful. Uh, one thing I wanted to say about that is we, uh, they invoked the 25th Amendment uh, right before the elections. I believe that they knew that um, President Biden was suffering from a cognitive decline. And so the 25th Amendment says that you have a right to remove a sitting president if they become disabled or in, uh, impaired cognitively so that they can no longer do their job. And then Kamala Harris, our vice president, would move up to the president. And then Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, would move into the vice presidency. But this was just, it was just a sad state. But anyway, I'll move on. Enough Please. about that. So the Express tells us, Prince Harry favorably uh, plummets, favorability, excuse me, plummets as uh, royal fans turn on the Duke of Sussex. It's just talking about um, a more recent poll, and this was uh, dated um, April the 6th. Its favorability rating dropped 35 percentage points, according to the comparison between the IPPOS study completed March uh, 2022 and similar anal uh, analysis carried out just before he tied the knot with Megan in May of 2018. According to the latest survey, only uh, three in 10 people um, see Prince Harry as favorable. Only Prince Andrew performed worse than the Sussexes in this survey, with 11% of those polled saying to have a positive impression of him against 69% saying that they have an unfavorable approach. Um, opinion of them, and Megan's was just as low. The Queen continues to top the charts at the most loved member of the royal family was 69%, and I just think that it's it's so sad because she should be way up there at the top, but I think all the damage that um, with Harry and Meghan leaving has caused an Oprah in interview and um, you know, the things that they've put out saying and the people who work for them and all of the negative PR, I think it's really hurt um, the royal family. 
Uh, so it says that uh, while the monarch is at 69%, Prince William is at 64 and the Duchess is in third in the charts at 60%. So uh, the next article we have in the Express, Build Global Profile, Prince William thrashed out strategy to prepare Kate for the royal duty. Now, I thought this was very smart of him. Instead of uh, bringing someone straight in like they did Diana and Meghan and just, you know, putting them in uh, events and tours right off the bat, he slowly, we know he dated her 10 years, but he slowly brought her in, and we'll show you how he did that. So I thought it was... Um, he said he went against the courtiers and said, nope, this is what I plan on doing. And it said, actually, what William and Kate did was that they wanted to build up very gradually and for her to take her time to grow in confidence and to grow in understanding. This also allowed them to start a family, to be there more and raise their children. And I think it's wonderful. They had plenty of family members who could um, also join in and do the things that needed to be done. The journalist said that they wanted her, for her to really build gradually a profile on the world stage, and she's done it, and they've done a tremendous job. So kudos uh, for William for um, standing up and saying, I think this is the way it needs to be done. So the royal commentator said a master stroke with William and Kate and their advisors came up with this to utilize Kate's passion for photography. And then uh, she did the hold still during the... Um, uh, the lockdowns and created that beautiful book for charity. Everything they do, it goes back to charity. It's not for profit, and it shouldn't be. And that's why people have such a difficult time with Harry and Meghan, because they're profiting off the brand of the royal family and also using those royal titles. Said she added she decided that she would take her own pictures of their children, and these would be released to the newspapers and to the wider public. This is another thing. They share photos of their children with us. They don't have all of these photographers come in and overwhelm the kids. So uh, Catherine herself takes the photos and it shows the children uh, playing and having fun in very natural settings. And I think that's wonderful to see. And what we haven't been able to understand about um, Harry and Meghan is they don't want to share it. It's like they want to keep the kids locked away and uh, not show us their their growth or what they look like and um, and just see them growing. It's, you know, we've gotten the one Christmas card for Lily Bat and uh, was it two for Archie? Megan and Harry call for action after new report highlights effect of pandemic on women. Now, this Megan's always, it's whatever the, the hot buzz thing is uh, that she will go for. So their idea of charity is to post other people's facts about a crisis in our society that the Montecito morons know nothing about. Then they want to tell you to go to their webpage so that they can sell your personal information as well as stealing your ideas and calling them their own to view how you can contribute money and support their Archwell Foundation. So what this means is if you go to their website, um, archwell.com, it actually tells you on there that it is going to capture your information. They're going to turn around and sell it for marketing. And uh, they want you to share your stories. Let's say that um, it's a story about what you went through during the uh, lockdown and how it affected you. And say you uh, wrote that story on the website. They then can use that story, whether in... Um, you know, something on their website or whether it be for a podcast or may decide to, to do something with Netflix, but it's absolutely uh, terrible. So they want to copy everybody else's work. They want you to just submit it to them and you get no credit. Your name will not be used. You get no payment for it. Not that you would expect any, but it's just the way they go about it. I've never seen a charity do that. So, um, and it says whatever version of whatever their crisis calls is for that day, finally they tell you uh, to not donate, but to, to said crisis because they want you to donate it directly to their foundation. And this was um, uh, Cal Lizzie, um, and thank you very much for that. My London, and uh, oh, I forgot somebody sent this to me through Instagram today. And please forgive me, I just can't think of your name, but I know you're watching and you'll know who you are because I answered you back and said I would use it today. So thank you very much. Um, K 
Kate Middleton and Prince William want to move into Prince Andrew's Royal Lodge home, but he will not budge. Now, we've been seeing these articles come out for the last few months, and I'll tell you why I think they're doing this. I almost think because there's been threats um, on the family members, and we know that the squad has made threats and um, threats of harm, and, and um, their security team have you know, been able to find different things out there that um, they want to keep the family secure. So I almost think that they are, you know, talking about the different places they might be going so as nobody will really know where they settle. I don't know if they will announce it later, but I imagine they'll let um, the kids finish out the school year and then start somewhere next year. But I do think that they want to get closer to the Queen. And um, if they stayed on the um, the palace grounds, whether, you know, even if it's not in Windsor with the Queen, then they're, you know, they would be closer. The other thing is I think they're a little bit concerned about um, Andrew. I think William and Charles have discussed and said that they're concerned about Andrew being brought into the fold and that he's been visiting the Queen for like three times a day ever since um, their father died and grandfather died. So I don't know if that's the case or not, but that would kind of make sense. And they're a little bit worried that um, if she is, you know, kind of in a fragile state, which I don't think there's anything wrong with her mind. I think it's her mobility. Um, and God bless her. I hope that improves. But I think they're just a little bit concerned that, um, you know, Andrew was always called the favorite son that she might, he might talk her into letting her play, letting him play a more prominent role at family events. So many royals, including Princess Eugenie, Prince Edward, and Prince Andrew, already call the historic estate home, uh, but it has been said that the Duke and Duchess of, of Cambridge are hoping to move on to the estate this summer and have their eyes set on that property in particular, and that would be where um, Prince Andrew and uh, Sarah Ferguson live. Now, this is also on my line. It says reports have suggested that the couple are hoping to move back into that, but they're saying that um, Prince Andrew just will not budge, and this was at the Duke's Thanksgiving service. You can see William and Kate and the kids there. The family also counts Amner Hall in Norfolk and Tamnagar Cottage in Balmoral, Scotland as their homes that they visit. So it says that there are real fears that despite being banished from the firm in January, that he, Andrew, is using his closeness to the Queen as a springboard back into public life. I don't think she's going to allow that to happen, not anything officially. The Thanksgiving service um, was also for um, Andrew's father, Prince Philip, and I believe that um, because he was would not be accompanied uh, by anyone that um, that she would have him bring her in. Now, um, this was, do you remember, and uh, Marie Claire wrote about this, that uh, Harry had promised to never do anything to embarrass the royal family when uh, it was said that the queen reached out to Harry uh, after knowing that he and Meghan were going to do a sit down with Oprah Winfrey and just reminded him, you know, uh, you don't want to hurt it. You don't want to do anything to hurt the brand. Um, I understand you're going to have a sit down, but um, just, you know, be careful what you talk about. And he knew this, and he made that promise to her and said, I would never do anything to embarrass them. Well, I think we can all see that Harry has embarrassed his family on many occasions, and um, and not to mention the uh, the memoir that he's working on. The Queen told uh, had called Prince Harry to uphold his family values before the Oprah interview. Mel on Sunday, now this is, uh, or Mel online, is talking about Australians. So you guys that live in Australia, I would like to know what you think the people feel. It says Republicans claim Australians don't want Prince Charles as king as they will unveil the new plan to replace the monarchy with the president. Republicans believe that it's time to do this after uh, the death of Queen Elizabeth II. So I'm really curious what your views are. Um, do you want this to happen? Um, do you want them to, um, to have your own president? So it says they just, the Republicans just don't want um, Prince Charles to be head of state. The Republic movement released a draft of constitutional amendments 
One is for candidates nominated for president to serve five-year terms. So I really want to know what you, uh, what the feeling is where you live, or maybe you have a family member that lives there. Okay, uh, Daily Mail. The 90, uh, excuse me, the 95-year-old is celebrating her 70th year on the throne and is Britain's longest-serving monarch. But Republicans want that reign to be the last one in Australia. Uh, pumping for a, a publicly elected president to replace that royal family. And it says, with the Queen's reign drawing to an end, we're about to see some dramatic change in Australia. We have uh, Charles as King of Australia, and then there's something that Australians clearly don't want, and that's from the ARM director, Sandy uh, Breyer, told AAP on Sunday. He said that the movement plans each state and the territory could nominate one presidential candidate and the federal government could nominate three with Australians voting on the preferred candidate. Hmm. So I'm wondering um, if it's got, oh, you can nominate three, but I guess, oh, I'm just curious how that works. And if your area is uh, divided by states um, or how that works in Australia. So uh, we talked about all that. Um, now, this is something from uh, Teresa Longo fan uh, page, and they have a blog spot. And this is telling us a little bit about what they have said that uh, is going to be in Harry's memoir, that they had received a copy of a draft in their hand, and uh, they know about two different things. So... Um, Harry entered the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst, May 8, 2005, somewhat against his will. He was not interested in the stifling discipline and utter control the institution continued to impact upon him, according to him. Now, this is according to Harry's memoir. In April 2006, Harry completed officer training and was commissioned as a cornet second lieutenant in the Blues and Royals, a regiment of the Household Cavalry in the British Army. The Army stint was their last-ditch effort to rehabilitate and fortify Harry's strength and character, but Harry writes that this um, effectively was their way of casting him out, n and not the first time, rather than respond to his needs with a warmer embrace. Well, if he doesn't explain to them that he's having issues, that he needs to talk to someone, um, you know, sometimes, and he's going along and acting fine, you know, that's a two-way street. Maybe he should have spoke up then as well. Um, I don't know where the blame lies. And it's just a sad situation because he still doesn't seem to have gotten over the death of his mother. And he feels like he's cast aside. But also, um, as you might know or have a friend or know somebody or maybe even have a child that is a bit rebellious or will um, act out and kind of sow the wild oats and, and do things that uh, you don't want them to do, but especially when you think it's becoming a problem. And we know that there were times that Harry was caught up and his picture was in the paper and uh, it was by the, um, the courtiers and uh, the PR team that were able to kind of squash that. But he would never would come out and admit his wrongdoing. Even when he came out of a pub and hit a photographer, he refused to apologize. And the um, the palace had to apologize for him. So, Harry, you know, I, I can understand how you might feel, but sometimes families are doing what they think is best for you. Maybe they thought that you were running wild, but you needed uh, discipline in your life and that you needed this type of regimen. But then we know when Harry talked and was interviewed, he said that he enjoyed it. That was the happiest time that he was. So which is it, Harry? Because you're completely contradicting what you've always told the media. Was that a lie that you were telling them? So it says, um, the literary work will call for a breakdown of barriers around closeness and touch. Founding the Victus Games and stepping into his career as a working royal was certainly a time of pride as it seemed Harry finally found his philanthropic footing, which he will divulge. It still wasn't roses as a working royal. Again, this coincides with the theme we outlined for you before. Marco will be set as a catalyst and cast as his partner in crime rather than his instigator. Well, we know when people named their leaving, uh, dubbed it Mexit, Harry was very offended by that, and I'm sure Megan was, because she said that it was, um, 
you know, uh, the wrong thing to say and that it was putting all the blame on her and that it was a sexist and misogynist thing to say about her. So he's given her the credit as making him uh, feel strong enough to be able to go out and leave. And I guess he'll give her credit in the book. And I do feel like that their marriage, and this is just in my opinion, from everything that I've read and seen, that um, it's more of a business partnership. And I don't, I think they're pretty toxic together. But I think Harry wants to stay for the kid or kids, whatever that situation may be. And um, and I think it will, it's going to take him a, a little more time before he realizes you, you just, you can't, sometimes you can't make things work. Sometimes two people just aren't meant to be together and it's not a healthy relationship. So uh, the next part of the memoir, the exclusives about the upcoming content being uh, mulled about for Prince Harry's memoir set to be released by Penguin Random House in uh, late 2022. Well, they've talked about June and then we've heard September. It just keeps changing. Harry has written how the death of his mother so greatly impacted him, but how he begrudgingly continued on in his roles after the tragic death while, grapple, while grappling with feelings of destation uh, for the firm. Unfortunately, watching his mother's interviews influenced his views, the royal family, and the position within. He saw the Martin B Bashir, uh, Bashir interview that, um, and what she had to say about, you know, there was three of us in this marriage. But uh, what he doesn't realize and um, came out later is Diana had had many affairs with many men and she was having affairs before Charles had even began to see Camilla again and I do think he tried his best to work things out with her but I think that she was so much younger than him and just so young and, and naive and immature that um, you know and I'm sure she felt lonely I'm sure she just wanted to feel um, love and uh, you know and someone be compassionate toward her he is going to claim continued skepticism as reasons for both their children have not yet returned to the UK, referencing his security battles. So I, I'd already said that he wouldn't come back for the uh, Thanksgiving service because I knew with that court case, he wasn't going to go back and everybody say, see, everything was just fine. But you had um, 20, 30 royals from uh, uh, from all these other countries that were able to come and and uh, there was no security issue for them. They were all kept safe. So I think, again, this is Megan as well, in my opinion, not wanting him out of her sight because I think she's afraid if he got back home that he would uh, talk to his family and, and maybe realize that, you know, he, he wants to live at home. But I, I really think he'll stay as long as he can for the child or children. The undertone here is almost vengeful, as in keeping the kids from knowing his family. The firm he believes led his mother to harm, and he still thinks, how could he think that his family would put out a hit on his mother? His mother was very paranoid in the end, and we know that she dealt with a lot of uh, psychological and emotional issues, as well as Harry, and Harry's admitted to his anxiety and his paranoia. And even Chelsea Davies said that uh, when she broke up with him, that she just couldn't take it, that he would constantly look back and, and say that somebody was following them and that he was being papped. And she said there would be nobody around, but he always thought people were hiding in the bushes. So, I, you know, I know the guy has issues and I feel bad for him, but I just don't know that this better up coaching is the right thing for him. I think he might need a, an actual... Um, psychologist or psychiatrist to help him to deal with those issues because he clearly doesn't seem to have uh, come to terms with them. So anyway, he watched all that, watched the um, the investigation and the reports that came out about uh, Princess Diana's death and, you know, and he got it planted in his mind. And could it be that um, his spouse might have also said, I really believe, uh, see how they're mean to us, see how they want us out. What if they did harm her and they're coming after me next? So that would make him fear their security and be paranoid. Harry had always been protected in the UK by the elite and armed branch of the Metropolitan Police Service known as SO14, 
or the Royalty Protection Group. He will round this out, admitting his defection was a long time coming and a path to his healing. Alleged Markle was a positive catalyst for the change. Despite losing out on the half-in, half-out deal that they were hoping for, he will present his story as the power of the underdog and how only good uh, became of his life. Uh, swap and lap, leap of faith. So, and excuse me, my voice is scratchy again. I go through seasonal allergies, and that's what's been going on with me the last few weeks. And I was out weeding. Um, it was 82 degrees here today, and I was pulling weeds in my uh, flower bed and, you know, um, changing the flag around my mailbox and, and um, my little decorative things outside of my pillows and stuff on the bench. But, um, so whenever I come in or if I'm mowing the lawn, which I love to do yard work, but um, if I'm doing that, my throat kind of closes up and and um, I've always had a little allergy to um, the grass and stuff. So again, I'm sorry. I'm going to get a quick drink of my water. And the last part of this said, unfortunately, for this exclusive, we must refrain from detailing very much about the source in order to protect them. Rest assured, this source is one involved in the project. You read it here first. So this group uh, that um, comes out with a lot of news breaking stories around the world, and I believe they're located in Rome, actually has been very right on the money. So they're saying that uh, they were handed a copy or parts of a draft of his actual memoir and that it's somebody that's close to the project and uh, knows what is there. So I don't know how they get the information they do, but, but they, they do, and they do a good job. Revisiting the O and the D word, over the one year ago, ahead of Mech's at Oprah interview, we, we, treat, we tweeted, I'm sorry, this from the at Bark Jack on Twitter. Now, this comes again from Teresa Longo fan page, Blogspot. Oprah is not a true friend not anymore, I bet you she's not, of the Sussex duo. She's an opportunist, so she was using them, according to this source. We got a hold of some emails. Wow. Oprah and a few of her closest circle fully expect that the interview would go down like a lead balloon for the Mexit pair while uh, catapulting her own publicity. I don't know that it did much for Oprah, though, but I mean, I, it got people talking about it, but it was so bad that after a few weeks, after what, 50 million had seen it, it disappeared from all traces of the internet. ABC took it down. It wasn't on the other um, uh, streaming channels where they had um, streamed it. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I think it hurt her, and then it seemed like she had another, was it um, Adele? that she interviewed, and it didn't go very well. So, yes, Oprah and company knew the interview wasn't going to be a good look for Harry and Meghan, even before it aired. Remember they were saying Gail King, who is her best friend, who works on the uh, morning news desk at ABC, had said, oh, this, Oprah said this is the best interview that she has ever done in her life, and she can't wait for people to see it. Well, that wasn't an interview. That was a sit-down with two people that were allowed to speak their truths, and not very much was asked. And you notice that in that, uh, if you saw it, that Megan didn't say anything really about her family. I think she knew that they would see this because it was being broadcast in America, and she wasn't about to do anything because she might have been worried about getting sued. But... She sure did um, put Harry's family down, and she even had Harry doing it as well. But she told a little story when she was telling Oprah that uh, while she was pregnant that um, a, a family member had questioned the color of his skin. And Harry came right into the interview, and if you watched it closely, Harry sat down, and Oprah asked him about it. And he said, well, it was early on when we were dating, so they were not married. She was not expecting a child. And um, and then I've seen on another blog that it was just brought up in a ordinary conversation. So and that might be in here, so let me keep reading. Yes, Oprah and company knew the interview wasn't going to be good at all for them, and they knew it before it aired. What does this say about Oprah's real relationship with the pair? Did she use and discard them while profiting from their misery? Well, I also think that um, that Megan was very upset after uh, they got the backlash 
and I think that she and Oprah had a falling out. I don't think they've been in touch again since then, and you don't see Oprah um, doing anything to, um, you know, to have Megan over or uh, to be at uh, events and invite Megan. They're, they're like social outcasts, it appears to be, allegedly. When Oprah was promised to sit down as a gift to her, how grand. It was mutually understood by all that they had planned to do what they had planned to do, give Oprah what she wanted. Oprah had previously made it clear she wanted to interview them. It is suffices to say that Oprah employed every strategic opportunity with coercion to get the couple to utilize a confessional platform of her timeline. Now, guys, let me just remind you when this Oprah interview came out. It was March of last year. Prince Philip lay dying in a hospital, and they and they had asked them, don't air it now, don't do it. And they did air it, and it was said that Prince Philip saw it and that that was what killed him in the end because he only lived, um, I believe it was less than a week after it, and he knew about it. They were trying to keep it from him, but he knew about it and said he was going to watch it and didn't want to have anything to do with him. And I truly believe that they were both cut out of his will from that moment on. Because I don't think there was anything at the reading of the will that was going to go to them. And if it was, it would have been um, put for Harry to like they've done his other trust, like um, a Princess Anne has done, and make it when he's much older in case he and Megan split up. That way she wouldn't have access to it because it's in a trust and he's not entitled to it till a certain age. So we won't know. That will be, what they say, a hundred years after the death of Prince Philip before people can see um, what was in his will. When Oprah was promised that sit down and, and told that it was a gift, Oprah had previously made it clear that she wanted to interview them. Uh, on Twitter, we reported Oprah was promised a birthday gift well in advance of Megxit. So they, she was invited to the wedding. She tried to approach, and she even said this during the sit-down, talked to Megan about possibly interviewing her, and she said that she had courtiers and different people of the palace staff all around her and that she could barely even talk. And she says, no, 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 I, you know, I couldn't possibly do that. It's not the time. Well, I think she chose the time in March because this was days after they had gotten with the queen. You know, they wanted the one year to to um, to go over to America and to see how it worked out for them. Well, on the 31st of March, it would have been one year. And I believe it was around the 13th when this aired, but it was after they had, uh, Harry had told Her Majesty, you know, it was the one year review and said, I'm not coming back. We're going to stay in the USA. So I, that is, it was after the end of that month is when the um, the protection and everything started. They wanted to go through the end of March, even though this had happened, you know, in October when they were sent to uh, uh, Canada or Vancouver and then, um, and then ended up staying because they weren't getting what they wanted. It was like they're two petulant children that want to have things their way. So anyway... I believe they timed it and called Oprah and said, we're done. We've already told them we're not coming back. So, uh, and they're going to pull our security and not pay for it anymore. And then I think, and my children aren't getting titles. And I think it was strictly um, revenge that Megan called Oprah and said, yep, now's the time to do it. Let's sit down. I truly do because I don't think that um, she would have done that if uh, they continued with the security, but they couldn't, and you don't get titles. I mean, uh, that he could possibly get titles when Charles is king, but he can't from the uh, from the great grandmother. And then they haven't let her see those children, and and then Megan's father hasn't either. So it's it's just a shame. Those kids will grow up not knowing who their family is, and and I think how are they going to have a sense of uh, security and feel the love and warmth of. Um, of cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, great-grandparents, the queen, for goodness sakes, and especially when you name your daughter after the queen, which, don't get me started on that, calling her Lilibet was that private name that, um, that Her Majesty's husband, Prince Philip, used for her. That was so wrong on so many ways, so many ways. So anyway, going back to that, 
but um, couldn't at the time was revealed in the actual interview that aired. We exclusively re exclusively revealed this on our Twitter months in advance of the airing. Way back, a keen wedding guest overheard interactions and conversations between Harry, Meghan, and Oprah at the wedding and provided us with information. They provided interesting details only someone within the wedding party could have truly known and showed proof of their attendance to us at the wedding. Megan, closely guarded by courtiers and chaperones, could not openly speak about collaborating with Oprah in any capacity, as it was certainly not her decision to make at this time. This is likely why they spoke on the deal in terms of gifting, as one would be for a birthday. So, yeah, she was she was using Oprah just like Oprah was using her, and I still feel like she might have gotten paid, even though Oprah said nobody's getting paid or nobody has been paid. What if they were paid after? We know that Megan, when she does something, it's all because she wants to pick up a paycheck. So the mood at the Harkle Manor has been sour, anxious, panic-stricken lately. There has not been communication between Ellen and the pair since the Ellen Show disaster aired. Now, there were rumors out there on another blog that uh, she was going over to Ellen and uh, Portia's house, which is supposed to be in the same gated community there in Montecito, and then um, with Oprah living, you know, just down the road as well. But many are asking about a potential divorce looming. We know and have reported upon, based on sources with a direct contact, that the pair have heated arguments. It is accurate to say Harry is quite submissive and eager to keep the peace, but at some point, even he has had enough and a resentment and will be, oh, I can't see the last word in there. But anyway, yeah, a resent. oh, here we go. Oh, is that it? Heated arguments. I'm sorry, I can't get, oh, and has been quite submissive about it. And... Next story. So, what do you guys think about that? Uh, Duchess Megan writes a touching letter following the end of her an animal charity uh, patronage. Remember when she was patron of the Mayhew House? Guys, this one just really gets me because um, Megan had her father's uncle that helped her get into the Venezuela embassy as an internship in college when she was forced to leave college, allegedly, and just uh, could be rumors. Uh, but when she super glued um, during a hazing thing of sororities at Northwestern University, uh, she was set to go, uh, had to be off campus and had to leave for about a year. So she was trying to, um, to go somewhere else. So her father and uncle hooked her up for that. Well, then allegedly it was said that six weeks after arriving that, um, that she had gotten knocked up or gotten involved with a uh, military officer who was married with children. And the embassy found out and said, uh, you know, she needs to leave. So they sent her back. I mean, this is like everywhere she goes. She, she breaks rules. She does things that are just reprehensible. And, and then just you know, saunters back in like, you know what? I didn't do anything. I do what I want. So she wrote a letter about a lady that died that was caring for her dog um, that had passed away. And in the letter, she writes all about the dog. The emotional support of a rescue animal is unparalleled. As you'll soon realize, it is not you who saves them. It is they who save us, the Duchess wrote. My Lord, all right, what about the fact that they didn't bring their dog with them and they left a dog back in the UK and, and then left one back in Toronto? So she must not keep them for life. And then what was it? Uh, it was said that, um, was it Bogart or one of the dogs she said didn't like Harry? It had two broken legs and was seen riding in the car with Her Majesty. So we don't even know if they have that dog back. And then they got out to, was it... Uh, Canada that they adopted uh, Puma and then there was I think another rescue once they got to California so she might be adopting dogs but she's leaving um, you know leaving them behind all over the place and just is full of excuses about it but anyway nothing to read there and there's one other thing on it but oh my gosh 
So, um, I'm going to go back to that. But anyway, it says, Megan parts ways with Mayhew, British Animal Charity. And, oh, and remember, she said, oh, and I donate to them, and everybody should. We found out she gives 10 pounds a month to them, or did, for what, two years? And it says it ended one year after Mexit, as the Duchess urges people to support U.S. women's causes on Archwell website. She doesn't want you to give to the Mayhew um, Animal Shelter. She wants you to give to Archwell because she says she wants to um, invest it in women's causes and she wants to do a lot of studies and studies about why women are called this and that. And why is she using uh, charitable money to pay for all these studies? Couldn't it be better served to actually go to someone <coughs> excuse me, or in the community or to refugees or to any anything other than that, but to uh, fund studies. And mm, let me go back now. It says, oh, here's the other thing. Using People Magazine. People is gladly doing uh, devilish business, creating articles, sure to make the royal family hot under the collars. Seems innocent enough, but it's a part of a coordinated public relations campaign to create distaste for the institution while rallying and pivoting more people toward Team Sussex. We confirmed People Magazine to be directly doing business with Markle even before uh, the Five Friends fiasco, even before she sent Five Friends allegedly to People Magazine to talk about the letter she had written to her father because she wrote it to her father, Dear Daddy, and Thomas sat on it for six or seven months. So when it didn't go out there, she thought, oh, I thought he would have put it out there. And I wanted to say, see, look, my dad's releasing the letter. But that she was already using People Magazine and okay and had learned Vanity Fair. And we know that there's the certain ones that um, will speak favorably of Megan. And then the journalists who write for them really do not... Um, like the monarchy, you know, they're kind of against them. All right. Uh, the tone of this article and others portray time old tradition, honor and dignity as outdated and archaic and thinly uh, veiled swipes without context. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. And we know that she's in with all of that and the negative press that's come out. So, um, oh, this was, and let me see if I've got the lady's name. Yes, I'm just going to say Tam. Uh, Tam said that um, the Winter's behavior was some sort of massive narc vindictive rage. So she was interested to hear Lady C's video yesterday. And this may have been a day or so ago because there's no dates on this. Indeed, I think it was so important that she transcribed the notes for what Lady C wrote. Now I'm going to see, I want to say there was two pictures, but I'm going to read this and it's very tiny. So, uh, Lady Colin Campbell says this about Megan. She will stop at nothing, and nothing will stop her trying to get what she wants. And he will do whatever he can to make her happy by getting what she wants. Now, Megan has a pattern of this with all of her uh, love interests. And Harry knew this from the beginning. So, failure, humiliation, and ridicule will not stop her. Stripping her titles will not stop her. She has no empathy. This is a narcissist, doesn't have empathy or compassion. Sympathy or compassion for others, least of all, Harry. They don't have the ability to love. If you've ever uh, known, had a family member, a friend, or been in a relationship with a, um, a narcissist, they love no one but themselves. They don't feel for other people. Um, I, we've seen times when things have happened to Harry and Megan just bust out laughing. They don't care about anybody else and who they step on and who gets hurt in the uh, the wake of, um, you know, a Megan tornado. So who she has mentally, emotionally, and physically abused. My gosh, the queen and the royal family. Playing on um, Harry's paranoia to drive him to extreme of um, idiotacy. Idiotacy, excuse me. No cause is too personal or sacred for her not to use. It is personal gain, miscarriage, mental health, and dead soldiers. People, especially Harry, are there just to serve her needs. When they will cease to be useful, what they do is they 
They're like a succubus. They just drain them dry till there's nothing left for them to give you. She ditches them, and sadly, it may be some time now before she ditches Harry. As long as she thinks she's still got money and prestige and all that, in my humble opinion, just my opinion, allegedly, that's how long she'll stay with him till she sees it's all dried up and there's, it's just too much that she can't get what she needs from him. It's just like uh, Jada Pinkett Smith with her husband, Will. She gaslights him, and that's what Megan does with Harry, in my opinion. It says that she has no skills, talents, or abilities except for manipulation, but she thinks she is the most brilliant and talented person in the world. She has no concept of the truth. She lies, and it suits her, and she believes her own lies. That's a big thing. They do believe their own lies. They believe what comes out of their mouth. And, and it's just it, it's just amazing. It, it's, it's like somebody that's born without a soul. And, and you think, what happened and went so wrong with them? Or was it um, nurture or uh, environment, nature versus nurture? I, I just don't know what it was. Maybe she was given everything and, you know, never told no. So, um, goes on to say, nothing is ever her fault, but much of it will be Harry's when it comes to the divorce. Oh, yes, yeah, she's going to say, I didn't want to leave. Harry's the one who wanted to leave. I didn't do this. Harry's abusive. He's, he's addicted to this. He does too much of that. So, there's a lot of issues there. She cares for no one other than herself. She loves no one, not even herself. She is incapable of love. Only when no one returns her calls, when no one gives her any attention, when the money has run out and she is in goal or something, it will finally stop. But she will still believe that she is the center of the universe and that she is the victim. She is incurable. Whenever they used to do these Zoom calls, if you'd notice, Megan would position herself in the center of the frame and Harry would be behind her. When they did the Time magazine picture and the one that where Meg, um, Harry stood behind her like he was putting his hands on her shoulder and it looked like he was leaning up uh, like a hairdresser would to say, how do you like your hairstyle? I'm telling you, she controls them. But anyway, now, there's something I'm going to read to you on here real quick. Now, guys... This was from Tam, and this is uh, somebody else's reporting. I'm just reading what I found on a public domain. I cannot say that this is true, but I will say in my research, I have come across numerous things and uh, people that hinted or in a roundabout way talked about um, something about Harry and his sex life. Has is also fair game. We already know that he has cheated in school, flunked classes, required a drug intervention, was condemned multiple times, including by the prime minister, for racism, has had has mental illness, lied, allegedly is bisexual, which is perfectly fine, and if he came out, then I'm sure he could be a role model for that, has interestingly sexual practices, received special treatment in Afghanistan, and the list goes on and on. And I'm just going to say this is rumor, this is gossip, but it was also said that when he was in Afghanistan, and I guess the servicemen were able to go into uh, a town or a place where you might be able to um, have relations with someone for payment, that he uh, had gotten in trouble a few different times because he liked to beat women up. I don't know if that is true, but I have seen it numerous places. And it could be that he just doesn't want this information to get out that maybe he does. I've seen pictures of him where he's biting on a guy's um, chest parts, their ears, and licking them, and just all kinds of gross things. You've probably seen them too. Global News uh, Inc. Yeah, dot com. Nope, the former KBT TV actress uh, Meghan Markle is not going to be president of the United States. Now, I will say this. We know that she's written to senators. She's gotten their numbers. She wants to be out there. She wants to be uh, seen as a uh, California liberal 
who is woke and be part of the Democratic Party. But I will say I found domains registered under her in my research a year ago that said Meghan Markle, I think, for president.com 2024, 2028, 2032. And then there were also others, um, Meghan Markle campaign or something. I probably still got them back in my photos on my other phone, but... Um, I'm not saying she is or isn't, but I've done videos on them where it sure seemed like she was, but we'll see what it says. A rumor's been floating around about the former cable TV actress, Meghan Markle, considering running for president of the United States. No, she has never actually said it. Just another story that has been floating to keep her name in the news and people run with it, which should make her and her PR people very happy. First, I would like to say I greatly respect Tom Bauer. I'm waiting on his book to come out. Uh, I think it's still a few more months. Mr. Bauer was quoted as saying in an article that ran in Newsweek magazine on March 31st, 2021, the prospect of Meghan running for president is possible, and I'd even say likely, Bauer told Closer magazine, according to the Daily Mail. I really believe it's where she sees herself going. Well, I don't. I think she just wants to be, I thought she wanted to come back and be a Hollywood actress and be a big diva and, you know, get treated like royalty on the set, but she is so overexposed and she hasn't went about it in a smart way. Megan always said she wanted to blow up the internet and uh, didn't care if it was good publicity, bad, but that uh, just being in the headlines made people not forget about her. Well, I think she's overexposed now because it's also been rumored that Netflix wants them to have social media account where they can promote some of the things that they're doing. Well, we know she doesn't want to do that because if you remember her Sussex Royal Instagram that she wasn't allowed to take with her, um, and then it was allegedly said that she was buying so many followers because she was trying to compete with the Instagram page for the royal family and William and Kate and thought it was a popularity contest that if they could be, if she could be the most popular, then somehow she and Harry could take the throne. I don't know why somebody in their delusional mindset would think something like that. And I know she said she doesn't understand the royal family, but she does. She did, and I just will never believe that. It's just my opinion. The prospect of Megan running, I, what, we said that, I'm sorry. It should be noted Mr. Bauer is not the only one who has been mentioning this. But due to respect, she thinks it's laughable. In reality, if she gave up the title, she still would not run for president. Here are the reasons why, and I didn't have to ask sources. It's common sense. First, in America, we have something called the opposition research. Guys, you know right now that Megan doesn't want anything negative said about her. And when it is said, what is she trying to do? Allegedly has, you know, um, certain men and journalists and bot farms and trolls that are allegedly paid to go on and do smear campaigns against other members of the royal family, especially targeting William and Kate to try to affect their popularity while they do all of these um, praises for her and call her their queen. And, um, oh, God, oh, you just wouldn't believe it. I don't know if you go and look at those things, but it, it, it's, you just, you, you think, my gosh, these people are delusional. Are they in an institution? Because you've just never seen anything like it and, and the things that we get hit with. Oh, and that reminds me, Sue Smith is back on YouTube. She got it reinstated uh, within the last day, and Yankee Wally still hasn't yet, but she's still on Rumble. So, um, you know, we just have to, you know, be careful with what we say and, and just do the best we can. Opposition research is the practice of collecting information on a political opponent or other. So what they do is, if you have... Um, let's say you're running for House Representatives, for a member of Parliament, for President, for uh, a Senator, Congress, um, you know, whatever it is you do, but it's a government office. When you do that, there are, um, and 
your opponents are going to try to dig up any dirt they can. You see this a lot in American politics with president and vice president. They try to dig up anything in your past that they could throw dirt on you. Because instead of getting up there and debating about what we want to hear, that their plans are, what their agenda is, they'd rather get up there and do tit for tat on... Um, and for shock value and try to throw different things out there that they feel could embarrass them or uh, disparage their image. But um, so let me know what you all think. I'm sorry. I don't know how long I went with this. I hope everybody's having a good week. Like I said, it was like 82 degrees um, where I live in the United States and uh, super hot and humid. We had had rain uh, yesterday, but um and that really helped with our pollen, with everything blooming, and that affects your throat and allergies. But um, the rain really did wash a lot of it away, and so it was nice to be able to go out there some. But um, let me know what you're interested in. And if there's anything where you live that you want me to cover, I will do my best to do it. I may have to ask people for help. Uh, because I may not understand it, just like I don't understand everything about the Commonwealth. And But people are good to come up and say, you know, and explain it to me. But I'll do my best if you've got something of interest that uh, you want me to report on. And um, I guess that's it for today. But I hope that you will um, like, share, subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up for the algorithms. And I hope you'll subscribe. I have so many viewers that don't subscribe. And it doesn't cost anything. Nothing's tracked. And your information, you can unsubscribe at any time you want just by clicking on the link. But it really does um, help us. And it shows that you're supporting me. And, and also those comments. But have a blessed day. God bless you all. Thank you for listening to me. And um, I, I love you. And I'll be back very soon. Thanks again.